Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 1.4. Now, listen, we're not going to have a pod quiz on it, so some of you might have left already, but I hope not. Um, this will teach you how to graph in Excel, which is where we're going to graph in Excel all the time in our class. So that's what that's else we're going to do. Title. Your title needs to be descriptive. What exactly does versus mean? Meaning, I don't like versus. I don't like a title that says this versus that. The title that I like is the effect of the x-axis on the y-axis. Other things sometimes are okay, but the effect of the x-axis on the y-axis is my personal favorite and will always get you full credit. So x is the independent variable, um, which is what you chose. And the y is the dependent variable, which is the effect what you chose, so sometimes we call it the cause, which is, it says again on the next slide. Examples, the effect of studying on test scores, that tells you what's going to happen, the effect of money on getting a date, the effect of cheating on grades, or this title of my ability to draw mountains over time, I thought was pretty good too. Axes, they need to be descriptive and include units, meaning they need to be quantitative with numbers and units. Scaling will be generated by Excel, which saves you a ton of time. The independent variables on the x-axis, which by the way is the first column, and the dependent variables on the y-axis, which would be the second column. The independent variable is the cause, and the dependent variable is the effect. Trend lines, do not connect the dots. Use a scatter plot. Choose the line type that appears to match the data. Check the R-squared to be sure. Add a trend line by right-clicking points in Excel and clicking on Add Trend Lines. Presentation, when in doubt, so this means what's it look like. When in doubt, right-click to change things and omit your graph paper lines. So here's an example. Um, open up Excel if you have it, and you should. Open Excel and try and make this graph. I'm going to do it after I go through these things. Open Excel. So engine size, top speed, engine size, top speed, engine size, top speed. So looking at this, um, the first thing you do when you open Excel is put in your little table, right? And you're going to insert a scatter graph, OK? So click the top left choice. Never do bar graphs. But I love bar graphs. I need to write this down. I use them in sixth grade for everything, which is true. Bar graphs are good to compare unlike things, which we don't do in chemistry. So for example, the number of deer, the number of butterflies, the number of creepy guys that are in forest preserves at dusk would be a bar graph. So, or another bar graph would be your chemistry knowledge, and the chemistry knowledge of ignorant red devils, or ignorant dukes, or ignorant huskies. So once you do that and you insert that, you get something like this. Click on Layout. Okay, so when you click on Layout, then you'll get these chart design tools. So Layout, the band. Click on Axis Titles and add both with units in parentheses. Click on Chart Title and give a good title. Now, it, the default is top speed. That's not a good, good title. Add a trend line. Right click on the points on the graph. Choose Add Trend Line, and usually it's going to be linear, but you choose whatever the best one is. And choose Display Equation on the chart, and choose to display the R squared value. That's squared, not 2. Sorry about that. On the chart. Formula on R squared. The ideal value for R squared is 1.00, but that is practically impossible. You want it to be 0.99. So if you think of like grades, you want a 99% or 98%. If it's less than 90%, less than 0.90, um, you did something wrong. You may need to try several line types to get the best R squared value. So what that means is you check to see whichever one has the best R squared value, and that's typically what you're going to go with. The equation will give you the slope of the line if it's linear. Y equals mx plus b. And if you remember, m is the slope. If you have to do it like the Amish people because you're not doing it on a computer, it's rise over run. So how much up does it go for how much over it goes? Copy and paste the graph into Word. So the effective engine size on top speed, you should have something that looks very much like this. You could move this so there's not a line through here. So the slope of this line is 0.2918. You must manually circle the points. Eh, we've kind of gotten rid of that. So circling the points is nice, I suppose, but we're getting rid of it. Um, Sometimes the line is extended. You don't have to extend the line because Excel doesn't do it for you. But you can use that. Extending the line is called extrapolation. Graph should be done in Excel. If you have a newer version, use a newer podcast. There is no newer version yet. So let me discard this and go ahead and make this and show you how quickly I can make this happy little dude. So let me swing this guy around here. Here's my graph. Um, so what I do is I highlight these two columns. Okay, and then I'm going to insert a scatter graph. And the top left one, remember what you pick. Ba-bam, there's my graph. Come on, ba-bam. Ba-bam, there's my graph. There it is. And then remember, I go to layout. 
and I'm going to change my chart title. No, I guess I could just double click on my chart title. Uh, I want to go to axis titles. Do, 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 do. Primary horizontal axis title, title below axis. So there it is. So this was top, whoops, top speed parentheses units, MPH. That's miles per hour to you and me, Russ. And then that. So notice how it changed. By the way, I don't like these things. I got rid of it. And then axis titles, primary vertical axis title. Uh, I like it horizontal. I like to have it where you can read it left to right and not have to turn your head. So if you you don't want to look at a cheap motel time, let's say axis title. And this is engine size. Engine size. And I use CCs, which is a cubic centimeter if you're in doctor land. So, and that's what engineers use. Whoops. Click off of that. And notice how to adjust it. Excel is wonderful. Now I'm going to show my line. So I left click on my points. I right click on my points. And I'm going to add a trend line. Ba-bam. 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 Oh, come on. Ba-bam. There we go. Um, it looked linear to me, so I'm going to give that a shot. I'm going to display the equation and display the R squared value. And then I'm going to move this so it's more readable. Okay. So 0.999999994. Ooh, that's pretty. So what I'm going to do next is format the plot area, because these lines don't really help me a whole lot. And I'm going to go to, oops, that's not what I wanted, so, whoopsie, I guess I'll close it. I'm looking for something that says grid lines, format plot area. Fill, no fill, solid fill, grading fill, uh, border color, border, border styles, shadow, 3D format. I can't find grid lines and I'm getting angry now. But I guess that's not the ugliest thing in the world. So I can't find grid lines, so if you can find how... Oh, there's a grid line button. Grid lines. Primary horizontal grid lines. None. Hey, isn't that pretty? And I'm all done. And that ends our podcast. So I will leave you with a little Johnny Cash as he walks the line. And and I say to... No. And I say to this. Toodles. And I walk the line.